Hey guys, Chris here with a quick belt video on a WWE Shop Classic Tag Replica Belt. Uh, this is a really, really cool belt that I've had for a little while now. Um, and I thought I'd just do a quick video on it because it's got some uh, really cool features on it. Um, so I bought this from WWE Shop a few months ago. Um, really, really cool belt. Uh, it's frequently on sale. Um, and I picked up this one for about... Uh, 300 US, uh, which all things considered, I think is very, very good value. Uh, the plates in particular are the best part of the belt. And I feel like for that uh, price, you really do get uh, amazing quality. So I'll start off with things I like about the belt. And the first thing I'll mention is the plates. So for 300 US, you get really crystal clear um, sharp detail. Uh, and that's especially, especially evident in the Eagle. The Eagle has just real sharp uh, detail on it. Very, very nice. Um, also the, the belt uh, it really has like a mirror finish. Uh, it is like a real mirror, so um, it does turn into a bit of a fingerprint magnet. Um, but you can probably see there just how much of a mirror it is. Um, but a really clean and clear, sharp uh, detail on the plates. And one thing I noticed with these, uh, well, with this design on unlicensed versions of the belt or bootlegs, is that a lot of these details uh, get very, very washed out. And even the faces on the grapplers, that's a detail that's often lost on the bootleg belts. Um, and I used to think it was because of the uh, SD etching quality, but unfortunately a lot of makers just green light really poor artwork. And these grapplers end up looking like, you know, ghosts or Gumby or just, you know, two eyes and a mouth. And it looks very, very poor. Whereas this version, uh, it's just really clean, clear, and sharp. Um, so you do get a lot of value with this belt uh, for 300 US. The other thing I really like about the belt is uh, the leather cut. Um, I'm a huge fan of like a thicker leather cut uh, where you know, you'll have your bevel line, you'll also have your uh, camouflage tooling, and then you'll have your plate. It just looks really clean and tidy that way, rather than the plate sitting over all those details. So you'll see that at the top of, of the um, plate as well. Very, very nice. So um, initially I was going to re-leather this belt, but uh, I've gone in a different direction for another tag belt. So I thought I'd um, move this one on. But if, if and when I do get another belt, I'm definitely using the same cut. I think that's a... Uh, a really nice, smart choice. Uh, onto the cons of the belt. Um, unfortunately, the main plate comes very, very flat. So um, I was in the stages of curving the belt. You can probably see there it's got a slight curve. And the reason for that is I do it in stages. Uh, one, because it's really hard on my wrists. The way I do it, uh, it's probably not the best way. But uh, I take it, you know, slowly and curve it slowly. Um, and the other reason I do it is because I feel like if you're curving a plate, it's best to do it slowly over time rather than applying too much pressure at once. But anyway, it comes very, very flat, unfortunately. Um, so you can see there's a slight curve. I mean, at the end of the day, these can be curved. So it's not, you know, the end of the world if you were to... Um, wind up with this belt you can curve it quite easily over time but just be aware if you get it it's going to be a very flat main plate uh, the other thing I don't like about the belt is the uh, stock strap so of course this is a very stiff stiff strap um, but the other thing as well is that we've reached the point where WWE shop can emboss uh, snap box textures onto their stock straps but they're still choosing to uh, sew on a piece of vinyl 
to emulate the look of a, of a snap box. And I don't know why, because, I mean, even on the winged eagle that they released uh, recently, they've got a real uh, or a simulated snap box. So unfortunately, they've gone for the piece of vinyl. And even then, they could probably tuck in the edges to the other, the other side of the strap, but they just leave the, the piece hanging out, and I just feel like it looks uh, very cheap and lazy. Um, then on the other side here, we've got the Legends logo plate, which is fine. That's what they have to use these days, so that's not a problem. Uh, and then the other snap box there too. Now this of course does have the Legends logo on all plates. And I know that can be a gripe for some people. And usually it's, you know, part of a list of problems with a replica belt, perhaps like the all gold winged eagle where you're putting up with a few problems. Uh, whereas on this belt, it, it does pretty well. So I think people might be able to tolerate the logo a little bit more here than they would with, say, an all gold winged eagle with bars not attached or things like that. Um, but really, really cool. Uh, I would definitely recommend it. I've seen the JMR tag was released around the same time, and that's uh, that looks just as nice. Um, but all in all, the design is just fantastic. For a jewel-plated belt, all the elements that are gold or nickel contrast with it really well. You've got the, you know, the wreath border, and then the nickel plate, and all the elements that are gold-plated, uh, just pops really, really well. But anyway, guys, that's about all I have for this uh, replica. I definitely recommend one. I think it's uh, amazing value. I would just definitely recommend getting a real leather if you are interested in buying one because the stock strap, unfortunately, is very, very stiff and also uh, has sewn on snap boxes. But uh, for the plates, I think the plates alone for 300 US is uh, amazing value. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Cheers. Bye.